Good morning, folks. This is Todd Coburn of Cal Poly Pomona with Lecture 23 of Arrow 4080 Finite Elements. Today we're going to take a baby step forward and learn how to do thermal analysis, looking at the structure response when subjected to a temperature rise. This is a steady state, so assuming everything's already come to equilibrium. Let's see how it works. All right, so uh, if we want to impose a thermal solution, we're just going to have to include a few new cards in our deck. If we take a look at a typical deck like this, Solution 101, we're still doing static analysis, which is a steady state analysis subjected to loads and or thermal effects. We find the first card we're going to need to add is a temperature card in the case control that basically specifies that we do want temperature effects and what the ID is of the card or cards that tells us how that analysis is going to be performed. Then you look down and in its most basic element, this particular deck has a temp uses the temperature D card, the temp D card, to impose the temperature. This is going to require a little bit of care, even though it's rather straightforward, and we'll see how that plays out in the next couple slides. Look pretty easy? Let's move further. All right, so uh, our first card is our temperature card. As with our other case control, remember, when we wanted displacements, we call out our displacements, which displacements we want. We say we want them all. Also, we had our load cards here, right? If we had loads imposed, we would have called out the ID card of the loads that are imposed in this subcase. So in this case, when we call out the temperature with an ID of 1, what we're basically saying is go look in the bulk data file for a temperature card that has an ID of 1 that will tell you how this analysis is done. There are a number of different cards that can impose the temperature effects. One of the cards is... Uh, is this temp D card. The temperature card that, uh, that calls out the ID here, the temp equals one card, is shown here on the right, and this tells some of the idiosyncrasies, uh, some of the little details of how that card can be used. Okay? For our purposes, all we need to know is we're going to call out that temp. You can write out temperature or just write temp, and we're going to call out an ID, and there's going to be an ID in the bulk data file that gives us our temperature. If you put a whole bunch of temperature cards down there in the bulk data file, but do not call out their IDs in the subcase, then that temperature will not be imposed. It will just be ignored. Welcome to life. So uh, our next card is taking a look at uh, one way to impose temperatures. And this temp card is not shown in this particular deck, is using the temperature card. What the temperature card does is allow us, you can ignore the set, uh, you'll have temperature, set ID will be the ID, once again, that has to tie back to the case control, and then it allows us to call out different temperatures at different grid points. For example, if you have a structure with a temperature distribution and you want to look at what is the steady state response, or once all those temperatures have already been imposed on the model, let's say there's a, you've got some kind of solar array and there's uh, radiation hitting one part of the structure that brings it to some family of temperatures and then you have maybe cooling at another part that has some family of temperatures and if using this card you can impose different temperatures at good, different grid points and then those temperatures will be used to solve the steady state solution okay another card is the temperature D card which is the one we saw in the model we're using now, the temp D card. And what that does is call out all temperatures everywhere in the model, which basically says everything in the model has this temperature unless specified otherwise. So if you want to impose a temperature of 70 to each and every grid point in the model, you can use temp D to uh, the default temperature to uh, in all grid points that are not specified. Now, if you also have a temp with an ID of one card that we saw on the last slide, and you call out the temperature at certain grid points, and have this card, temp D, then this card will be used to define the temperature everywhere where there's not a different card defining temperature. Anywhere where the temp card is used, it will trump these temperatures, trump these temperatures. 
make sure you vote manana or whenever it is it's coming up i already voted last week got it now you'll notice nash trend is not very smart this is nash trend just does what we say and that means it's only as strong as the person using it which ought to scare you a little bit You'll notice this calls out temp D and it calls out a, a temperature of 70, probably F in this particular, looks like US units, which means it'd be Fahrenheit. So basically this has to, the, the units on the temperature needs to match the units on your thermal coefficient of uh, expansion used in the material card. Now I'm not showing the, uh, or uh, I'm not highlighting the material card in this particular slide, but actually the material card is necessary, right? Because that's what has the alpha. Without alpha, this temperature won't do anything. Right? Another thing is, notice there's nothing talking about temperature at all. So this just says that the temperature is 70. Since there's no reference temperature, that's what it's imposing on this model. Okay? That means, even though it says 70, it's not like hey, I'm sitting here at 70 degrees feeling great, it means it experiences a temperature rise of 70. Okay? All right. Now, going back, remember we've seen the material card before, but one thing we didn't focus on is the reference temperature. So each and every element in your model is going to need any structural element. is going to have to have a material card, right, as well as a property card. And the material card could have used a T reference. It's actually right after the coefficient of thermal expansion. Right after the thermal coefficient of thermal expansion, there's T ref. Now, if you look down here at the second little red box, you'll notice that the default is zero. That's why on the last slide where we had the deck and our temp D carled out 70 degrees, that makes it a temperature rise because there was nothing calling out the, the reef reference temperature. If you look at that material card, it had a coefficient of thermal expansion, but it had no reference temperature. What that means is the reference temperature defaults to zero, and that makes that temperature D a temperature rise. Okay? Now, if we had imposed a temperature here, like let's say we imposed a reference temperature of 50 degrees, let's say you're in a cold place where the structure is launched, and then you have the temp D, which is 70, then that would mean you're going to 70 from 50, so it's only a temperature rise of 20 degrees. But if you leave T ref as blank, if you leave T ref blank, as we did on the last slide, then actually your T temperature D or your other temperature cards will define the entire temperature change. So we've got to be careful to identify what's the difference between a temperature change and just a temperature. Remember, temperature by itself doesn't cause structural uh, effects. It's a change in temperature that causes that, unless you're talking about de destroying the material or something. Okay, so what this means is we could have identified a reference temperature on our material one card or any other material card, and then all other temperatures would be relative to that. So now that we've defined the basic building blocks of doing thermal analysis, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can impose a thermal solution for our purposes in this class. And here is another little deck, looks quite similar to the, uh, the prior decks, but I've highlighted the cards that we need. You should always put in a title. In this class, you're gonna have arrow 4080, and then you'll have whatever other information with the project number, homework assignment, or whatever. You'll also be using a subtitle with your name and the date. This is actually a really good practice. You should probably retain that approach. The difference is your title will then change when you're doing a project for a company or on your own to whatever that title is. You should always have your date and a, your name and a date on here. When you get into the subcase, this subcase, it looks like this subcase is asking for some things back. It's imposing some constraints and it's applying some temperatures. There are no loads on this. We could have put loads on this, but there aren't because there's no load card. There is a force equals all, which means we want the forces back for all the elements. We want the stresses back for all the elements. But we didn't impose any forces on the structure. We just imposed a temperature, which induces forces and stresses. We then have whatever our bulk data file is. 
you know, whatever models our structure. And then in this particular case, it says, hey, in the MAT1 card, make sure you put an alpha and a reference temperature, whatever the ambient is of where this is built or stored or whatever. Then any later temperature cards can call out the actual temperatures and the temperature rise will be that actual minus the reference. This is showing a temp D card, which means all the nodes in the model get that temperature, actual temperature, relative to the T ref, which means what's the change in temperature? It's T actual minus T ref. If you call out no T ref, T ref is zero. If instead you use the temp card to identify the temperature at certain grid points, be sure to either call out the temp D card to call out the default temperatures or the default temperatures will just be T ref, and you'll only see, and those will remain at T ref. If you don't call out a temperature, it will remain at whatever temperature it was. Okay, that's how we can do it. Now you're actually gonna get practice in this. Uh, homework 23 will have you building a little thermal, really simple thermal model. You're first gonna solve it by hand using the methods from arrow 3261 using a problem that we will probably solve in arrow 3261. You're gonna to need to solve that in detail by hand. If you can't remember how to do that, go back and study your uh, handbook one or whatever your notes were from that class. Then you're gonna solve it with fine elements and then you're gonna compare your results. So that is all we have. That is how you can impose simple thermal analysis on a static structure. Enjoy.